are the most complicated things there are that we know of by, by, a, massive, by, by a massive amount. We're so complicated that it's unbelievable. And so, you know, there's a lot of cosmos out there, but there's a lot of cosmos in here too. Uh, it's almost a cliche to say that the human brain is the most complexly organized form of matter in the known universe, at least known to us humans. And uh, it's made up of neurons, made up of 100 billion neurons or nerve cells, and cells being the structural units of the nervous system. And each cell makes about 1,000 to 10,000 contacts with other neurons. Points of contact are called synapses. Each point can be on or off, can be inhibitory, can be excitatory. Based on this, it's been calculated that the number of possible brain states, permutations and combinations of brain activity, exceeds the number of elementary particles in the known universe. This gives you some idea of the complexity one is faced with in trying to understand the brain. Well, so far, only one connectome is known, that of this tiny worm. Its modest nervous system consists of just 300 neurons. And in the 1970s and 80s, a team of scientists mapped all 7,000 connections between the neurons. In this diagram, every node is a neuron and every line is a connection. This is the connectome of the worm C. elegans. Your connectome is far more complex than this because your brain contains 100 billion neurons and 10,000 times as many connections. There's a diagram like this for your brain, but it there's no way it would fit on this slide. Your connectome contains one million times more connections than your genome has letters. That's a lot of information. This word, phanesthai, is the root word of phenomena, phenomenon. And phenomena are the things that appear to you. And phanesthai means to shine forth. And the phenomenologists who were interested in the shining forth of things made the presumption that the things that manifested themselves to you as most meaningful were the most real things. And I think you can make a strong case that that's actually how your brain is wired. Because your brain is wired to react to things that have meaning before they construct the perceptions that you think of as objects. And the reason for that is because the meaning of things is more real, in some sense, but more important than the view of things as objects. And so, for example, a famous philosopher, psychologist of vision said that when you approach a cliff, you don't see a cliff, you see a falling off place. It isn't that it's an object, cliff, to which you attribute the meaning of falling off place to. It's the falling off place perception comes first, and the abstraction of the objective cliff, if it ever happens at all, comes much later much later conceptually, because even babies can detect cliffs, and much later historically. Right? We always are seeing meaning. That's all we ever see. And what's true for language is also true for the simplest thing that the brain does, seeing light. So when we see these two dots, we put them in different surrounds. We change the perception of them. The one in the lighter surround looks darker than the one in the dark surround. Why? It's because what you're seeing is the meaning of the light. So to give you an example, we have those same two illusions repeated here, two tiles, one in a dark surround, one in a light surround. The same illusion on the right is on the left, okay? The one in the dark surround looks slightly lighter than the one in the light surround. What I'm gonna do now is change their meaning, but I'm not gonna change what happens in those squares at all and see what happens to your perception. Are the illusions just as strong in the left and the right? No, the one on the left, now you see a white and a black tile. The one on the right, you see two tiles that are nearly exactly the same. Why? Because the one on the left, the light tile, if it were actually in shadow, there would be less light hitting it. If less light is hitting it, but it's reflecting the same amount of light to your eye as the one in light, it must be more reflective. So you see it as being lighter. Whereas the information on the right says, those two tiles are the same, they're under the same light, on different backgrounds. They must be equally reflective, so you see them as being the same. What you're seeing is the meaning of the information, the meaning of the relationships, not the information itself. So we can put all these things together and create incredibly strong illusions. So you might be surprised to know that the dark tile, the brown tile at the top, is exactly the same as the orange tile at the side. Those two tiles are physically the same. If I remove the context, change their meaning, you can see they're exactly the same. 
That's your physical reality, and that's your perceptual reality. You're a loose collection of living sub-personalities, each with its own set of motivations and perceptions and emotions and rationales, all of that. And you have limited control over that, so you're like a plurality of, 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 of internal personalities that's loosely linked into a unity. The scientific question about the I, the nature of the self, it, uh, we've shown in many experiments that your, some of your experiments, some of our experiments, clinical studies, so it's not the monolithic entity that it believes itself to be. Mm -hmm. There are many selves and many eyes, including the one attached to your sense of being a person.